And we're rolling, baby, with the Long Balls Golf Podcast. Dr. Jake Berman here, the originator, the founder of the Berman Method of Golf Performance, where we help you move better so you can hit the ball further, strike the ball more consistently, and play more frequently without aches and pains. Today, we're going to try something new. We're trying a video podcast today. So this is my first time doing this. Hopefully, I don't screw this up. So if you're listening right in the car make sure at some point you go back and click on the link below and watch the video because it'll make way more sense when you can hear it and see it at the same time right out of the gate I just wanted to talk about how the Berman method came to be because it's really important because this is what separates us from everybody else in the golf world where everybody else in the golf world is really focused on technique Technique, technique, technique. And I am 100%, well actually I should say 90% focused on physical ability. Because if you don't have the physical ability, there's no way you can execute the technique. And the easiest way to see this is if you're 70 years old, you're going to get a golf lesson, and your golf pro puts a video of your swing up on the screen right next to a video of one of the pros on TV on Sundays, right? You're going, okay, here's Tiger's swing, and here's your swing we got to get you into this position and you're sitting here looking at this going wait a minute that's the best golfer in the world and i'm 70 year old bob like this just doesn't make sense it really starts to mess with your mind because you're going am i really supposed to be able to do this or is this like not even close to what I should be able to execute? So that's technical things versus physical is, can your body physically get into these positions so that you can execute the technique that you're trying to do? So if we take this back to the beginning, one of the way, or the way that we got started with the Berman Golf method, the Berman method of golf performance was, I'm a physical therapist by trade, and I unintentionally started specializing in helping golfers with back pain in my clinic in Naples, Florida. Who would have thought there would be an abundance of golfers with back pain in Naples, Florida? So anyways, started getting really good at helping golfers with back pain, resolve their back pain, and get back out on the golf course playing two, three, four, five times a week. And what they ended up telling me over the years is they're saying, I'm hitting the ball better than ever. And I'm going, okay, light bulb's going off. So I thought, what if I did a similar intervention with somebody who did not have back pain? would they too start hitting the ball better than they had in years? Talking specifically for somebody over the age of 50. This is how this all got started. Long story short, I did the same intervention on somebody who didn't have back pain and he told me he was hitting the ball better. I'm like, okay, we've got something here. So now over the next 12 to 18 months, I started doing my own case studies, trying to figure out where was the most juice for the squeeze coming from? What was it that I could focus on, on their physical ability or inability that was going to give them the biggest return on investment for their golf game. And I originally started with swinging faster because this is the biggest thing in the golf world right now is if you can just swing faster, the ball's gonna go further because if you look at the PGA of America, they say for every one mile an hour club head speed you increase, you're gonna gain 2.8 yards more carry. So I'm going, okay, this is a no brainer. Let's work on muscles so that I can get this 60 to 70 year old golfer to swing the club faster. It started helping a little bit, but I really wasn't seeing a dramatic change. It wasn't a really big change. So then I started figuring out what was it that we could do to really tweak it just a little bit to make it from being a little bit better to a lot of it better. And it came down to two things. It came to core and glutes. When we could get the core and the glutes doing their job when they're supposed to be doing their job, specifically at the transition from the backswing to the downswing, 
we were seeing on average 10 more yards of carry with a seven iron with only one more mile an hour club head speed. Now there's a lot of ways that you can rationalize this from the golf world and most of the PGA pros say, well, it's because you're getting better ball contact now. And I'm going, okay, that's probably true. You are getting better ball contact. However, that contradicts the equation that you said for every one mile an hour of club head speed, you're gonna gain 2.8 yards carry. We're gaining on average 10 yards carry with one mile an hour. So that doesn't make sense with contact or without contact. So neither here nor there, this is where I differ big time with PGA philosophy. Because again, I'm just a physical therapist, right? Biomechanics expert, that's all I am. I'm not a PGA pro. If you go back and look at the laws of physics, a simple physics equation says that if you deliver more power into a fixed object, that object is going to go farther. <clears throat> if you can deliver more power into a fixed object, the golf ball, the golf ball, the only option on planet Earth because of the laws of physics, not the theories of physics, is the golf ball is going to go farther. So then I'm going, okay, if we're generating more power because the core and the glutes are now doing their job as I start to deliver the club head down into the golf ball, then we can rationalize by saying that golf ball is going 10 yards further because we delivered more power into it, which is not an equation from the PGA of America. And that is where the Berman method of golf performance really spawned. That's where it was born. That's where it was official where we said, okay, this is what we care about. We care about being able to use power more efficiently so that we can deliver the club head to the golf ball more efficiently so that we don't have to work as hard. And this benefited me primarily because I'll humbly say that my entire life, I've been able to just watch somebody play a sport and then I could go play it halfway decently, so decent enough athleticism until I picked up this stupid game, right? I thought that I was just gonna walk out there and just start carrying the ball with a seven iron 200 yards because that's what they're doing on, on TV and I'm more athletic than they are. I mean, some of the players that are playing on Sunday, I'm going, really? Yeah, I'm going to destroy this game. And I was lucky to hit it 145 yards with a seven iron for years. And I'm, it was so frustration, so frustrating. So I'm just whacking at it, just trying to swing it as hard as I possibly can. And the ball might go 155 yards and I'm going with a seven iron and I'm going, is that it? Is that as good as it gets? Then I switch to the driver. 240 yards, 250 yards. And I'm going, are you freaking kidding me right now? My buddies that I'm playing with that don't work out at all and they just have fun and party, they're carrying it 310, 320, 330. Not carrying it total, 310, 320. And I'm going, this isn't even fun. What is missing? Then when I started focusing on taking the club back slower so that I can make sure that I'm keeping my core, my glutes firing throughout the entirety of the backswing, then I'm going, oh wait, because I'm keeping my core and glutes firing from the beginning of the backswing, now all I have to do is just keep them firing as I'm going through the downswing. Versus what most people do is they wait to initiate the downswing and then try to turn on your core and glutes. Problem is, this is happening in a fraction of a second and we're just not that good. There's a reason why we're not playing on Sunday for money. We're not that good. If you are playing on Sunday for money, you probably are that good and you can turn on those muscles in a fraction of a second. We're not. So what you need to do right out of the gate, this is Berman Method 101. 
in the address position. Once you get there, immediately start contracting the core. So pull on your belly button in like you're getting ready to be sucker punched. Immediately start pressing your trail foot or your right foot if you're a righty through the ground. Not your toes, not your heels, but your entire foot. So now I got my glutes firing, my right glutes firing, and my core firing. And then slowly go into the backswing, initiating with the belt buckle. The reason why we initiate with the belt buckle is because we're telling our brain that our body is the primary mover, not our hands, right? I've got a whole bunch of videos and podcasts on this theory, so go, we'll try to link to that in the show notes. And then go back as slow as you possibly can so that you can keep those muscles firing, and then all you have to do is undo it the other direction. Really simple say it said, sometimes not so easy to execute. That's why I coined the phrase, the slower you go, the farther it'll go. The slower you go into the backswing, the farther the ball will go. Because as you're going slow into the backswing, you're keeping more muscles activated than you would if you just kind of flip it back there and flip it through. Because this is more of a, this is momentum swinging when you just swing it back fast and swing it through fast, that's momentum. But when you take it back slowly, this is a controlled motion. That's very controlled. I got muscles firing right now. My glutes are firing right now. This is controlled. I can hold it here. I can pause, right? Versus most people, top of their backswing has their left elbow bent. The club shaft is at parallel to the ground. And then you can't physically hold that statically because it's a momentum based swing. So then they just have to flip it back the other way. So that's a super long story short. I guess it wasn't short at all on how the Berman method came to be. Started out physical therapy, helping golfers with back pain figured out that there was some low hanging fruit on how do you get more juice out of the squeeze. Not talking about technique at all. This is strictly physics. So you can have the worst looking swing over the top, the worst looking swing that you possibly have, or the nicest, beautiful inside out swing. It doesn't matter. When you use more power from your core and your glutes, it becomes more reproducible. Because think about it this way, if you've got the ugliest over the top swing that produces the biggest banana slice every single time off the tee box, you can shoot very low scores. Because if you can do it every single time, all you have to do is aim way left. If you know that 100% of the time you're going to hit a giant banana slice off the tee, aim left. Problem is, when you do aim left, you have the occasional dreaded straight ball because it's not consistent enough. If you're hitting a slice seven out of 10 times, but you're hitting a straight ball three out of 10 times, you don't know what's gonna happen. So you cannot take a third of the fairway out of the equation. Me, for example, I know the ball is not going left. I'm either going to hit it dead straight or I'm going to have this little baby fade. It's not going left. So what I do every single time on the tee box is I get on the tee box and I aim to the left side of the fairway. Because if it goes dead straight, I'm on the left side of the fairway. If I have a baby fade, it's going to be somewhere in the middle or the right side of the fairway. You have to be able to take a third of the fairway out of the equation. And the only way you can do that is if you have a 100% reproducible swing. The easiest way to get reproducibility in your swing, consistency in your swing, is to slow it the F down. Specifically your backswing. You do not hit the golf ball in the backswing. Slow down the back swing, keep the muscles firing your core and your glutes, and then all you have to do is undo it. I know I keep saying all you have to do, all you have to do is undo it, and it sounds really simple. It will become simpler and simpler. The hardest part is slowing down the back swing. 
So we'll end with the slower you go, the farther it will go. Keep the muscles firing, take your time, execute a decent golf shot. Reproducibi reproducibility is gonna happen if you just slow it down and keep the muscles firing. The quickest way to not have rep reproducibility is to just freaking wing it. Just freaking get up there and whack it. You're gonna hit one good shot out of 10. That's why you have that one good shot on the front nine and the one good shot on the back nine where you're like, yeah, I freaking smoked that one. I really know how to play this game. You don't know how to play it. You got lucky. That's all it is. It's just luck. We want consistency. Consistency over and over again. Consistently hit it fat. Consistently hit it thin. Consistently shank it. Once you can consistently do those bad things, then we can start fixing things. You cannot fix something if it's not consistent. We've all gone through this. You have to have consistency before you can start fixing things. Because if you don't know if you're on the tee box, you don't know if you're gonna yank it, slice it, or hit it straight, how are you gonna work on it? You can't work on it. So step number one, is try your best to do the same thing over and over again, even if it's chunking it. Chunk 10 balls in a row, 20 balls in a row, because if you can do it over and over again, then you can start to fix it. But if you chunk one, and then you pre one, and then you thin one, then it's like, okay, I don't really know what the problem is, so I can't really fix it if I don't know what the problem is. So with all that, make sure you like, subscribe. Let me know what you thought about this video podcast style. We're gonna to try to do this a little bit more to go into some of the uh, more details of the biomechanics, posture, maintaining spine angle, turning within the cylinder, how do you load the trail leg, loading the glutes, using the ground reaction forces. I think that this video podcast style will give us more opportunity to communicate the message a little clearer. So let me know what you think and make sure you check out our new website, BermanGolf.com. We completely revamped it. Memberships, membership opportunities are clear so you can go through and check them out one by one. Let me know what, you're, what we should talk about on the next episode. If you got questions, email me distance at BermanGolf.com. Like, subscribe, share. Yeah.